Hello. If you're watching this, then odds are you have probably done some research on this problem and trying to resolve this said problem and have come to the conclusion amongst your searching, whether it be through searches, through the internet, or through reading, uh, that you may have DPDR. And this video here is to assist anyone that may be going through this from someone that has personally experienced DPDR. Now, what is DPDR? I'm not really here to talk too much about what it is clinically because I'm here to talk about it to people that have experienced it. Um, but I will say that DPDR, what does it stand for? It stands for depersonalization de slash derealization. And the way that I would describe it in a non-clinical way is that it feels like you are in a fog, a bog, uh, a cloud. Um, that's how it's been described in the past through many others as well. Um, but one way I've described it in the past before is it's like being in a movie. It's like being in a movie, but you are not the one that is writing your character. It's someone else. But there's this base sheet that has been built, and that writer is going off of that base sheet. And that base sheet is you and your characteristics. And once you have sort of obtained DPDR, it then goes from there. So, my story. I'd like to get into that a little. So yes, I have had DPDR in the past. I had my first episode um, back in late 2014. And you may wonder what triggers DPDR. It can be many of things. For whoever it is that may be watching this, for you, uh, it could be a number of things. It could be a car accident. It could be a uh, use of drugs and send you into DPDR uh, from essentially like a bad experience. Um, it could be abuse, whether it be mental or physical or both, uh, from, say, a, a family member or a loved one. The thing with DPDR is it is not exclusive to any age, but is more common around younger years. And that's when I had my first episode. I had my first episode around when I was uh, 15, 16, something like that. But it can happen from, say, about eight years old to all the way in your 30s, 40s even. It's just more possible when you're young. So, immediately, I'm sure you're going off in your head, well, maybe this isn't DP, uh, DPDR, maybe it's this, maybe it's that. And that's very understandable. And know that, and listen closely when I say this, it's okay. It's okay. Know that from someone that has experienced this and has triumphed, you're not going crazy. You're not. Everything that you're feeling, everything that you're thinking is normal when you have DPDR. And even when you hear someone else say that, even when you have it in your mind, it still grinds at your head, no I'm not, no I'm not, I'm going nuts, I have this, I have that. And when I say I have this and I have that, DPDR, I mean, the symptoms are very similar to a lot of things. 
similar to schizophrenia, for example. Uh, I remember when I was going through my first episode, I, at one point, before I was sure as to what was going on with me, I was so terrified and petrified that I had gained schizophrenia. And around that age, um, you know, 16, like teen, teen years, um, for males, I believe it's 21, 22 is the sort of cutoff before you can potentially have schizophrenia. So that was racing in my head a lot. But I one day was, I, I mustered enough energy to look it up myself and uh, uh, further look it up myself and try and figure out what was wrong. Uh, and lo and behold, uh, luckily I had came across videos of people that had experienced DPDR on YouTube. That's how I discovered it. And I want to return that favor since I have recovered to others that may be struggling with this as well. So I have some notes here. Um, and well, I guess I'll go a little bit more into sort of my story and how I felt. So when I initially had uh, acquired DPDR, uh, some of the feelings that I had experienced was being bedridden, um, extreme anxiousness, feeling like I'm in a fog, um, feeling like I don't have control over my own thoughts, and even control over my own motor function. Uh, it felt like someone else was moving me. It felt like someone was putting thoughts into my head. Um, and it was, it was quite, it was quite scary. And that is okay. That is okay to be scared of that because it's, it's a very foreign sensation. So for you that's going through it, don't, don't try and downplay it if you are. Don't try and say, oh, I'm just this and that, or oh, I just need to get over it or whatever. Don't, don't try and blow it off. It is, it is a situation. And that's okay, though. That really is okay. Because it isn't forever. It's not. The way that you're feeling is not forever. There's ways to combat it, and there's ways to move on and become the person that you were before it, but better. And that's what I'm going to get into. That's the whole point of this video. Um, so, I'd like to go into how to fight it. So, for me, when I had my episode... Which, speaking of which, I had two episodes, two at least very prominent episodes. Um, but one of the things that I tried to do to combat it was abuse uh, substances. And that's not the way to do it. We, as a human species, like to try and find the easy way out. And... I can tell you when you are going and suffering through a mental barrier, especially one that is so extreme, abusing a substance or letting someone abuse you or, or something of the likes like this, uh, it's not their answer. So the first thing that you need to do if you are abusing anything, um, and even if you're not abusing anything, if you are staying inside a lot and are scared to go out into the world, the first thing that you need to do is you need to stop. You need to stop doing all that. If you are drinking to try and suppress these thoughts and, and this sensation, if you are, are staying inside and, and, and staying plugged in 
and uh, uh, not going outside at all, that's not going to help you in the long run. If anything, it's just letting it build up more and more and you're just pushing it further and further into a corner, whereas eventually it will spring up and you will have another episode again and you will relapse even worse. And that's all very dark. It's very dark and scary. And that's why I'd like to next say how to combat that, how to fight it in a healthy way. <clears throat> Ways that I've found to combat and fight it off in a healthy way is by going outside. And I know that's very hard for some of people that are suffering through DPDR. That's very hard for you to hear. And that was very hard for me to hear too. Because the last thing that you want to do is go outside, walk around people that you don't know, possibly people say hi to you and you feel obligated to talk to them or whatever. It's the last thing you want to do. It's not the last thing that you want to do. It's the last thing that the, the sorter wants you to do. It's lying to you. So, <clears throat> with that being said, I have always been one with nature and have always found that going to parks is a very cleansing thing to do. You get a lot of energy from it. But once I acquired the disorder, I didn't want to do that anymore. But I finally came to my senses. I found some people that want to try and help me. Uh, and so I went out with them to parks and keeping it very basic, keeping it very basic and just going for a walk, listening to music, listening to a podcast, whatever it is. Um, it's very important to try and find someone that would be willing to do that with you. But if there isn't someone in your life that is kind of willing to stick it out with you like that, you need to do it yourself. And frankly, that can be better for some people. Like for me, at some points through my disorder, that was better for me to go out on my own and to not have anyone to talk to or what have you, just to kind of zone in on myself and sort of meditate. Um, and aside from parks, if say you live in a city in an area that isn't very good and there isn't really a nice park where you can sort of meditate and relax, there's other outlets, there's other things that you can do. Find a gym and, uh, you know, try and work on some programs and, and get your body moving. That's the biggest thing is getting your body moving. I talk about this thing called the triangle a lot. You have three points on the triangle it is your mind, your body, and your spirit. And if one of them is lacking, if one of them is hurting, the others, the other ones will hurt. But if you help one of the points that isn't hurting, it may help the said point and or points that is hurting. I believe that movement is medicine. And if you go out and reacclimate yourself to what you once were doing that was benefiting, uh, benefiting you, then it'll start to fight off the DPDR. And again, I know it's hard to do, but you must. I, I strongly advise it. Um, so keep that in mind. So the next thing I want to get into here is how to maintain. Once you get past the sort of climax of the DPDR, 
you start to feel better, but you're not quite there yet. You still kind of feel in a bog sometimes, but you have moments of clarity. And one of the things that I had struggled with was even the, even just the thought of, oh, I hope this doesn't come back. I'm worried this is going to come back. When is it going to come back? Is it going to come back? All that. And that kind of always kept me set in that negative state. So know that highs and lows are very normal. If you are able, if you were not able to step outside, if you have been bedridden for two weeks and couldn't leave the house for two weeks and you step outside and take a little walk around the block, that is some good improvement right there. That is great. And if, say, the next day you feel bedridden again, that's okay too. Because guess what? You got out of the house the day before. You're progressing. You are. And it just, you might not, it might not seem like it. Some days, you know, it, that, that, that choking feeling uh, spikes up again. But as long as you are consistent, you'll be okay. You just got to keep hammering at it. So don't be discouraged if the next day you, you're, you're feeling like you're in that bog again. Know that you are getting better. And to remember to go out again and to talk to your friends and... Try and make plans and hang out with them. And you don't even, and when I say talk to them, I'm not saying talk, you don't have to talk to them about the DPDR. Just try and talk to your friends like normal. Just have a conversation. Make, make the jokes that y'all, y'all make. Uh, talk about the things that y'all talk about. Just try and reacclimate yourself. So that's extremely important is to remember not every day is going to be amazing. And even without DPDR, that's life. Just like any other week, you'll have your highs, you'll have your lows. And, oh, one other point that I want to make on that point is, and this is very key, to remember to stay in the moment. With DBDR, we tend to dwell on something in the past, in the future, and it plays like a broken record. You think about it over and over and over, almost like OCD. And that is what sparks up that anxiety, is having this repetitive thought, uh, uh. And that's not to say with everything. If you're, if you keep thinking about a hobby, like a, a hobby that you love, that's great. That's awesome. Keep thinking about that. Keep thinking about that, that healthy hobby that you have or, 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 or whatever it may be. That's awesome. Keep that up and pursue it. Don't just think about it. Also pursue said hobby, passion. Um, but staying in the moment is so, so important. And Something that helped me a lot, and I still to do it to this day, is making points on what you need to do for the day, slash week, slash months, year. Um, but I highly recommend just starting with a day, a daily checklist, and to start really, really basic. Like for example. You set your alarm, wake up first thing, go for uh, have, make make some food, and next point, go for a walk. It's really simple, really simple, and just focus on those points. So another thing going into sort of the next chapter of this video is something that. A lot of people will not want to hear and it'll be it'll be hard to hear 
but I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. This whole video has not been sugarcoating and the rest of it won't. Uh, I want to lay out things as truthfully as possible. And with this being said, you need to know that your DPDR, it will never, and this is an important word, it will never fully go away. It will never fully go away. It will never... It will never leave your mind as if it never had come in, if that makes any sense. It will change you. And in the long run, once you recover, it's going to change you for the better. I assure that. Because this is a very difficult disorder to, to triumph over. Especially since there's not much... not much knowledge on it. There's not that many studies on it. There is, but it's not as well known as, say, other disorders. But when I say it won't go away, I'm not just, I'm not talking about the bog, I'm not talking about the distance, I'm not talking about the floating, all that. That does go away in time. But when I say it won't go away, I mean, I don't want you to have the idea in your head, okay, today is another day that I try and make DPDR vanish. No. It's more of a matter of how am I going to calm myself and rather live with it? How am I going to live with it? That's what you really need to be thinking about, is how am I going to live with DBDR? Something I struggled with in the beginning is exactly that. Thinking, how do I get rid of it? How do I get rid of it? I just want it to go away. It's not the right mindset. That's not the right mindset. It's more of a matter of how am I going to build my life and prosper with this problem because you must remember that it's okay it's normal everyone has their problems and this is one that some people have and it's okay so please keep that in mind and a follow-up with that is the what-ifs Let's say you get to the point where you do recover, when you recover. Once I got to my point of recovery, where I had escaped the bog and felt like I was in my own skin again, and in my own mind again, and in control. A question that always was proposed to me in my head was the what if. What if it does come back? What if I start feeling that fog again? Will I be triggered into a relapse? What if this and what if that? And those are very valid questions. And well, as an answer, what if? Well, the answer is you have that experience. And you need to remember that you have that experience and that you have, you have combated it, combated it and have fought it off, eased it rather. So if something in your life does trigger it, do remember that you have found those outlets, those healthy outlets to recover once more, if it does come back. And for some people, DPDR may last a day. Some people, it may last a week. 
some months. It's undetermined. There's no max time. It is all dependent upon the individual and how you're dealing with it. So, just keep trying. And uh, to wrap it up, the last thing I do want to say on my little note sheet there is I want this place, this video, to be a place where people can talk about this. If you have no one in your life to talk to, even if you do, but you feel uncomfortable talking about it to uh, your, your, your loved ones because you don't want to worry them, and I understand that, you can start by talking to me. I want the comments to be sort of a forum, a place where you can talk about this if you'd like. Um, I highly, I, highly, I highly welcome it. Uh, I don't want people to be scared to talk about it. If you're thinking about this whole time, stating this and that about yourself, have at it. I will respond to you. Um, I have another platform that I'll put in the description that you may contact me even in DM if you feel uncomfortable about putting a public comment on and having other people see it, you can DM me uh, on that account if that feels more comfortable. And I will happily talk about it and happily help you because it can be very dark and it can be very scary. And I don't think anyone should have to endure this problem for the rest of their lives. So, with all that being said, know that in the end, it'll be all 